Now you see the concept of viscous damping or linear damping. So the arrangement of the system is shown in the figure. So we are having a mass M which is supported by spring K and dash pot or viscous damper C which is having damping coefficient of C. So this is known as the dash pot which will offer the resistance to the motion and spring will also offer the restoring force. So restoring force is offered by the movement of this piston inside the cylinder which is filled with the oil. So oil will offer the viscous resistance to the motion of the piston and then the damping will be obtained and that is known as what the viscous damper or dash pot or we know that we are having the shock absorber in our motorcycle. So that is nothing but the viscous damping system and K is the spring which will also offer the restoring force. So here the restoring force is offered by the spring as well as by the dashboard. So as we know that Kx is the spring force, this is the restoring force, Cx dot is the damping force and Mx double dot is the inertia force. So we will see these forces in details. So let us draw the free body diagram first. So suppose we are having the direction of motion of the mass in the downward direction. To this inertia force mass into acceleration that is mx double dot will act in the upward direction that is opposite to the direction of motion. Spring force with kx will also act in the opposite direction and damping force cx dot will also act in the upward direction. So we can say that equation of motion is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to 0. Now we have to derive the expression further. So let us start with the derivation part. Now before we start with the derivation, let us try to understand how the damping force is defined. So it is directly proportional to the velocity. So f is directly proportional to the velocity that is nothing but x dot and constant of proportionality is damping coefficient that is c and therefore damping force is equal to c x dot or we can say that damping force is equal to c x dot and damping coefficient will be equal to f upon x dot. The important part is the derivation the unit of this damping coefficient so that is force divided by x dot. So force is in Newton. X dot is velocity. It is in meter per second. So we can say that you can transfer this second in the numerator. So Newton second per meter will be the unit of damping coefficient. Similarly, for torsional system, instead of force, we we'll replace it by torque and instead of velocity it will be angular velocity. So torque is proportional to omega or omega is nothing but theta dot. The constant of proportionality in the previous case linear system it was c. Now we will take into consideration c t, t for torsional system into theta dot. So t upon theta dot will be equal to c t and what will be the unit for this particular term that also we will see. So torque divided by theta dot. Torque is in Newton meter. So in the numerator we will have Newton meter and in the denominator we are having angular velocity which will be in radian per second. So ultimately this second will go in the numerator. So what is the unit of Ct? That is nothing but the damping coefficient for torsional system is Newton meter second per radian. So these are the definitions of damping coefficient for linear system as well as for the torsional system and corresponding units for that. Now the equation of motion which we have written is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to 0. Divide throughout by m so it will be x double dot plus c by m x dot plus k by m x is equal to 0 upon m that is nothing but 0. So this is the second order differential equation because the first term is d2x by dt square. x double dot means what? It is d2x by dt square. x dot means dx by dt and 
x as it is. Now the general form of displacement will be equal to suppose x is equal to capital X e raised to s t. Now why we have considered this general form of the displacement that is also important. So here whatever the amplitude is there it will be decreasing over a given period of cycles because and that particular decrease in the amplitude is in the exponential fashion and therefore x is replaced by capital X e raised to s t. So the amplitude goes on decreasing because of the spring and because of the dashpot or viscous damper and that decrement is known as the logarithmic decrement and the curve that we obtain in the as the reduction in the amplitude is that of the exponential manner and therefore x is equal to x e raised to s t. Now let x is equal to 1. So we can say that small x will be equal to e raised to s t. So x dot will be equal to we have to find out the derivative of this term with respect to t. So this is e raised to s t as it is and again derivative of s t by chain rule. So s is any real number so take that particular s outside so it is derivative of t with respect to t that is 1 so it is s e raised to s t again differentiate because we want x double dot also so this is s as it is and now derivative of e raised to s t so again derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x but instead of x we are having s t so again we will have to find out the derivative by chain rule so derivative of e raised to s t already we have calculated as s e raised to s t. So s and that this particular s which is already there so it is s square e raised to s t. So value of this entire term is s e raised to s t and again multiply by s. So s multiply by s that is s square e raised to s t. So again try to understand the displacement that we have assumed in exponential fashion because the decrease in the amplitude of the system takes place in the for example suppose we draw the cycle like this and you are having initial amplitude and then it goes on decreasing like this so this particular curve that is this is the amplitude this is the amplitude this is the amplitude and this is that. So this curve is the exponential curve and this nature we have assumed as e raised to s t. So this is the important part that we have to remember. Now we have to substitute these values in our equation 1. So equation 1 that we have already written is x double dot plus c by m x dot plus k by m x is equal to 0. So substitute the value. So x double dot, what is the value just now we have obtained is s square e raised to s t plus c by m. x dot the value is s e raised to s t. k by m in place of x we can substitute e raised to s t. So the variable is now changing from x to t. So take e raised to s t comma throughout these terms. So what we will have now. So if you take e raised to s t, this e raised to s t common, then it will be s square c by m s plus k by m and that is equal to 0. So 0 upon this e raised to s t, so that is 0. So only this term which is there in the square bracket will remain and that is equal to 0. So this is the quadratic equation and we have to find out the roots of this quadratic equation that is minus b square root of plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. So let us find out these roots. So you have to compare this with quadratic equation that is ax square plus bx plus c where the root is minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. So if we compare then we can find out the coefficients also. So value of a is nothing but 1, value of b is c by m and value of c is k by m. So value of b 
so this is the value of b so in place of b we are having c by m so in place of b it is minus c by m plus or minus as sign as it is square root as it is b square that is c by m square minus 4 value of a just now we have said that a is nothing but 1 over here so that is 1 c is nothing but k by m so you can compare this c is nothing but k by m divided by 2a that is 2 into 1 so a is 1 so this coefficient of a square is 1 then b is c by m and c is k by m so those values were written and then substituted in this formulas now rest of the part is very very typical part so mathematical adjustment is very important now so let us simplify this in a simple manner so this is nothing but c square upon m square minus 4k upon m whole divided by 2 so we can say that this is equal to minus c by m plus or minus now if you take c square upon m square common then it will be 1 minus now as there is no c square upon m square term on this side we will divide this entire term by c square upon m square rest of the terms are as it is so this 2 will be as it is Now we'll simplify further. So this is c square upon m square as it is 1 minus 4k upon m. This division term will convert it into multiplication. So it will be a reciprocal of this term that is m square upon c square. 1 m will get cancelled out from this. So it is minus c by m plus or minus c square upon m square into bracket 1 minus 4k m by c square this c square upon m square it will come out of the square root sign as c by m plus or minus sign is already there and remaining terms are as it is so we are getting the roots as if you take so minus c upon m upon 2 plus or minus c upon m upon 2 and this square root term so we have separated this term so it is a upon c plus b upon c a plus b upon c we have separated so minus c upon m divided by 2 plus or minus this entire term divided by 2 so this is this m will come in the denominator so it is c upon 2m and here also this m will come in the denominator so it is c upon 2m rest of the terms and signs are as it is so if you take c upon m common then it will be minus 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 4 k m divided by c square first we'll use plus sign so that will get the first root that is s1 and then we'll use the minus sign so it is minus 1 minus of square root of 1 minus 4 k m upon c square so these are the real and different roots and for real and different roots if you remember we have seen in our engineering mathematics the solution for this real and different roots is general solution is given by a e raised to s1 t plus b e raised to s2 t where s1 is this particular term and s2 is this root so this is the general solution for the viscous damping system so complementary function if you remember it is c1 e raised to m1x plus c2 e raised to m2x so instead of m1 and m2 we have written s1 and s2 and instead of c1 and c2 we have written a and b and our complementary function that is y or yc is nothing but x in this particular case because our variable is x so this is the general solution for linear damping system